Hi, I'm Larry Dignan, and we're here with Charles Giancarlo. He's CEO of Pure Storage, and we're going to talk about storage trends and the company strategy. Hi, Charles. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Larry. How are you doing? Good. Okay. Um, so let's kick off with the company strategy. You know, you guys kind of hit the market with, you know, a focus on flash storage and solid state, and then, you know, you, you developed a software model. Um, so, so what's the strategy looking like going forward? Yeah, you know, Larry, we had a, a very uh, convenient uh, point in time where we could look back. Uh, we had our 10th uh, anniversary last year, and we could look back and say, you know, we really uh, uh, restructured and recreated the idea of what a storage array should look like, making it uh, easy, to, uh, easy to operate, easy to install, uh, easy to manage, small, compact, uh, and just full of software uh, capabilities and power, all for, you know, one, one low price. And customers really responded to that. But as we looked forward, uh, what we decided was that what we really needed to do was uh, change the way that uh, users actually experienced uh, storage and data in general. Uh, we want to make uh, data on-prem and in the cloud uh, all look the same and all accessible via code. In other words, less about uh, manual installations and physical labor and much more uh, much more similar to the way that uh, you and I both um, access our files now um, uh, you know in the cloud that is they're invisible and yet the capabilities are really infinite so it's going to be less about uh, storage arrays and much more about how our customers are able to uh, access and utilize data both on-prem and the cloud so, so as far as revenue goes, are you more hardware based today or software based? And I guess what's that mix look like in the future? Right. Well, interestingly now, over a third of our revenue is subscription based. So yes, we still have a very large amount of our uh, revenue that comes in via hardware, but the fastest growing portion of our revenue is coming now from, subs uh, is coming from subscription. And this is both our evergreen model, where once a customer, uh, if they do buy uh, an array from us, uh, they are able to constantly upgrade that array, both hardware, or we upgrade that array, both hardware and software forever, based on the subscription. So the, the array never gets old, it's always new. Uh, and then secondly, our pure as a service uh, offerings, which uh, consists of a customer being able to um, uh, subscribe uh, to storage on-prem as well as in the cloud with a unified subscription. So uh, what that means is that uh, from the customer's viewpoint, uh, regardless of whether their data is stored on-prem or in the cloud, it's uh, one price and one subscription, one way of, of managing all of that uh, capability. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of talk in the enterprise today about multi-cloud and, you know, that applies to storage, it applies to infrastructure, it applies to compute, applies to a bunch of stuff. Um, how do you see that developing and what's that mean for pure storage? Are, are you going to be part of that multi-cloud when it comes to storage? Will you be managing it? Uh, how, how do you see it developing? Well, you bet. Our uh, unified subscription is a multi-cloud service, meaning that uh, it could be on-prem, it could be in a colo, it could be on uh, Amazon, where we have our software operating natively on AWS, or in Azure, which, again, our software is operating natively in all those environments. We're able to move data uh, between them, uh, and most important for customers is that the data interfaces, the data management, uh, and the data services are this exactly the same with Pure in all of those environments. And that makes it a lot easier to be able to move applications from one of those environments to another. I do very much believe in multi-cloud for one very simple reason. No customer really wants to be um, captive uh, to a single provider or a single operating system. If they design natively to any one of the hyperscalers, uh, the ability of moving that workload away is uh, really made much more difficult because the customer would need to refactor the application in order to move it to either another hyperscaler or to move it on-prem. Uh, if they utilize uh, Pure's, uh, Pure as a service, then uh, they're able to migrate their application much more easily between the different clouds. And at the very least, what it means is uh, that the customer has an ability or a better ability to be able to negotiate uh, better contracts with uh, their various uh, cloud su uh, suppliers. So do you see the on-premise folks being more of that management layer to the multi-cloud? I mean, you're well, talking uh, storage particularly, but you know, I, I see Dell, HPE, IBM. They all sort of have this 
you know, like when you do the wedding cake slide, they have that thing in the middle where, you know, they're kind of managing cloud resources on prem, hybrid, private, public, et cetera. Um, do, do you think that's a role for the on prem types? I do, actually. Uh, and the re reason is very simple. If uh, a customer is spending a huge amount of money uh, with a uh, particular or any of the hyperscalers, they're going to want the ability to be able to migrate or move applications between these environments. And, they're, uh, and even if they don't, uh, most large companies are gonna be using more than one of the hyperscalers. So they will need to manage environments uh, between them. Uh, the hyperscalers themselves are not going to make it easy to, um, to be able to migrate applications from one to another or to manage you know, it's unlikely that Amazon will uh, provide tools for you to manage your Azure environment and vice versa. And so it really will require third parties to fill in that void. What are you, what are you seeing on the demand curve from, you know, large enterprises and the midsize folks? Um, what we're seeing, uh, the midsize, uh, or what we call the commercial market uh, in the U.S. has really taken a big hit under COVID. Uh, we are starting to see it come back. Uh, but, uh, but frankly, it uh, is bearing the brunt of the uh, COVID emergency. Uh, large uh, companies outside of some of the major, um, uh, the major industries that have been hit, for example, healthcare and, and airlines. Uh, but outside of that, uh, the larger companies have really um, continued uh, to build out their infrastructure. And I think a large part of that is the migration to digital, uh, the digital transformation, that they have found that under COVID, in fact, the migration to digital is even more important than it was uh, bef uh, before the emergency. And so we are seeing uh, large enterprises, to some extent, fill the void that, uh, that COVID created with the mid-market. What do you, how do you see the, the markets of data management and storage kind of blending together over time? It's a, Larry, I think you've hit the nail on the head with that. Um, one can't just consider data storage without considering data management. Uh, the average uh, you know, database is copied on, on the order or replicated on the order of 10 to 12 times. And uh, keeping track of all those copies and their state, uh, where they exist, how to manage them is absolutely critical. And then if you think beyond that uh, to data protection and disaster recovery, uh, being able to manage all of those different uh, copies and uh, uh, replicated data environments is extremely important for companies. And, and it, frankly, is a major part of uh, data insecurity, is not knowing where all the copies of the different uh, databases and, and, uh, uh, and even unstructured data exist. So data management is gonna become, uh, and, and uh, compliance is gonna become a much greater part of overall data storage as we go forward. And that's mostly a software play, correct? Entirely software, absolutely. And frankly, I think increasingly software as a service. Okay, so, so you can see more storage vendors, mem uh, storage vendors getting into software as a service? Or, or uh, I, well, software, it, I guess? I think what we've seen from customers is that's the way that they prefer to um, uh, to consume their uh, their value um, value add. And let me let me explain it. I think really, if you think about uh, software uh, or even data storage arrays, um, what they what they really are is a means to a, to a, a, an an end uh, to an outcome, right? They're a means to delivering an application to a set of users inside uh, an enterprise. I think um, enterprises have said, well, we don't want a means to an end, we want the end that itself, we want the outcome. And I think the outcomes are things like SaaS services that go directly to their uh, end users. And so increasingly, um, data centers uh, and IT organizations wanna be able to provide outcomes to their end users and want to consume um, software as a service because it really is much more of a, uh, uh, it's not a much more outcome oriented rather than means oriented. So yes, I think that, uh, you know, whether, regardless of what kind of, of value add that companies like ourselves or, and other enterprise suppliers provide that increasingly it's gonna be delivered as software as a service. And, and you guys recently acquired Portworks. Um, what, what does that bring to the table? Portworks really um, has uh, provided a very important portion of our strategy uh, as we go forward. So 
uh, it provided two main things. Uh, one, uh, it, or rather, let me put it this way, it's completed two main things for Pure. Pure has uh, always been at the forefront of uh, uh, container-based uh, storage. Uh, we've had our Pure Service Orchestrator now for two years. However, they've really satisfied a, a mature container uh, environment, meaning that our arrays typically don't go for less than $50,000. Uh, so that's a fairly large container environment. Portworks brought the ability to start small with uh, container storage. Uh, you're able to start with just one server. And so it's allowed us now to appeal to the early container developers. So that was a very important uh, part of completing our uh, container story. But the second part is even more exciting. And that is that uh, while, uh, while Pure has been working on a Kubernetes-based um, uh, data management solution uh, for enabling our arrays to really operate uh, as code to developers, uh, Portworks has brought the same thing uh, to us for the uh, container side. So now aligning uh, these two uh, Kubernetes-based approaches to data management, we'll be able to support both containers as well as traditional application environments. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Larry, it's been a real pleasure. Always good to see you.